Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for clicking on it. Thanks for being a Patreon member. If you do that, it keeps the videos rolling just like this one. Now, for the intro, I'm going to give you a treat. I'm going to do a little acting for you. That's right. I am, really. I'm going to give you a little taste of my acting skills or lack thereof. Here we go. Ready? Okay, dude that I'm going to portray right now hates long videos and he cannot believe that I'm doing a feature length video on EDC. Here we go. Got to get into character. What did you say? Wait, you're telling me he did a 50 minute video on EDC? Five zero. Did I hear you? Five zero? 50 minutes? How do you talk for 50 minutes on EDC? It's so simple. How can you? Mm. And scene. <laughs> Do you like that? Uh, yeah, I can act when I want to. I can. I'm not that great, but I can find my motivation and act. Maybe next video I'll sing for you. Yeah, I'll spare you. I can sing, but only in a range like this. It's like very compressed. I can't go super high, super low. Hey, sing for is nothing fancy. Nah, not, not yet. Not yet. Uh, this video is intended to be fun. It is intended to be entertaining. It will be from the TMP point of view. Okay. No apologies. I've been a big EDC advocate ever since I started the project. We are officially in year 12 since channel creation date. Wow, that's a long time. I've always advocated preparedness. I've always advocated what I've called the civilian sheepdog concept, taking care of your fellow human beings. And that means you gotta be prepared. You gotta have stuff ready. I've talked about it over and over again. All the tabletops, top, not all, but most of them, they have this theme weaving through, the, through it that is talking about preparedness, serving your fellow man, being a good person. That's what we're built on here. So it's an opinion piece, that's all it is. As we talk about the 10, the 10 biggest mistakes guys make in their EDC carry systems. Yeah, 10. Hey, nothing fancy, that's only nine. Okay, you noticed, there's 10. I'm just testing you. I told you we're here to have a good time, just testing you. Now, some guys get really wrapped around the axle about everything online, including EDC. You, know, you talk about your technique, your knife, your gun, and they'll disagree with you. Next thing you know, online at least, they're coming to blows. Whew, let's relax. Remember, it's about fun. Nothing we're going to talk about here, nothing that I will talk about on this video and in the comments is really, let's get real, that important in the big scheme of things. It's not. Let's put it into perspective. This is kind of a hobby we do. Yes, we're preparedness dudes. We like being prepared. We like helping people. We like having the right tool for the right job. I'm that way. I like it. We like the second cool factor of carrying right, the right gear. Totally on board with that. But does it really matter? Not really. Now, if we were to go into without rule of law, then I would change that. Then it would really matter. You being prepared could be the difference between life or death. There, I said it. Without what is without rule of law, well, watch my videos. I have some posted on it. I kind of backed away from putting more out on WROL because I don't, I don't want to put a lot of gloom and doom out there and have it be a foundational aspect to TMP. It, it, it's out there, but I, I'm a positive person, and I don't want, I don't want people to, you know, it's, it's like the video I did. Don't hasten the day. That's still my message to the world. Don't hasten the day. If it comes without rule of law, we'll deal with it. We'll deal with it, you know? Be prepared. Have preparedness items. Have a preparedness mindset, physical fitness to deal with it. But, uh, man, I, I love rule of law. I'm a big supporter. I'm a sworn upholder of the Constitution like many of you are. And that's what I do. Rule of law is awesome. Ten big EDC mistakes. Dude, there could be 50 I just pulled 10 out of the air from my experience, mostly here in TMP, running into you guys. Now, somewhere along the video, I will probably put in some footage 
of awesome TMPers I've met, some doing very well in the gear check that I've been known to do and pretty much instituted online, and some doing not so great and failing miserably. I'll dig through the video archives and see if I can find guys like that. Now, I don't, when I show the footage of a dude, I'm not saying that that person did this or did that. It's just so you have something to look at instead of me. <laughs> so I'll, I'll put that on screen and some guys did great and some guys didn't. Now I mute the audio so sometimes you're going to want to know what we're saying in that video. You just got to go look at the gear check playlist. I think I have one out there. I put them on the B channel too. That is uh, the Nut and Fancy project. The screen name on that is Lieutenant Colonel Nut and Fancy. I'm retired Air Force pilot. You guys know that. But you can go there and uh, I'll do more. But the ground rule for my gear check though is guys have contacted me. They're like, dude, gear check me, gear check me. It doesn't work like that. It's like soldier boy drill. It has to be no notice and it has to be genuine to count. If you know the gear check is coming, it does not work. It's fake. So if you come to a trade show and you know I'm going to be there and they go, oh, dude, gear check me, gear check me. Come on, man. It's, it's fake. When I ch gear check a guy at Costco, that's real. He didn't know he's going to run into me. I say, hey, dude, gear check. Boom, gotcha. Then we really see what's going on. We find out if there's a disconnect between the posturing, as I call it, and the reality of EDC. And there's usually a big disconnect, especially online. Because online, guys will go, oh, I carry this. I carry a hand cannon with 5,000 rounds, a level 17 first aid kit. And then when you see them in person, like, hey, where's your stuff, dude? Wah, wah, they ain't got nothing. It happens all the time. I see it when I gear check you guys. I'm just saying I do. Now, when I talk about the 10 biggest, and again, these might, may or may not be the 10 biggest, but to me, they're important enough to make a video on them. Mistakes that guys do in their EDC systems. I'm not going to go to the obvious. Well, maybe it is obvious, but one of the biggest obvious things that guys do wrong is they don't carry something. So that will be a theme that, again, weaves through the conversation here, but it's a given that guys go out and when I gear check them, they have nothing. How many times have I seen that? A lot. A lot. And out come the excuses. Oh, well, you know, I was coming out, coming back from working out, you know, and in my truck, I got a lot of stuff. I got like a M134 GE Cannon with 7,000 rounds. <laughs> You know, I'm exaggerating, of course, but a lot of guys don't have anything. Um, they're leaving it at home. There's lots of excuses, but that that's an overarching mistake for sure. Um, and then low percentage carry. That's another mistake. Now, for this EDC video, I will assume that you're a pro 2A guy, that you're good with the gun issue. You're good with protecting other human beings. You're good with protecting your friends, your family, and that you're going to carry a gun. To me, that is integral to an EDC system, and I don't apologize for that at all. I'm a big 2A guy. I support the Constitution. I'm against any law that weakens our constitutional rights to carry because a safe society is an armed society with good civilians. Here I go on a rant again. I'll try not to rant. But if you think the cops are going to provide for rule of law all the time, you're wrong. You're wrong. It, it doesn't happen. And any good police sheriff office will support good civilians being armed. That's the way it is. It reduces crime. It reduces violent crime. There are thousands and thousands of instances per month, probably more, in the United States where a gun is never fired, but its mere presence deters violent crime. Guys don't report it. What are they going to do? Hey, man, I pulled my gun out on a guy just telling you police officers... They're not going to do that. They don't report it. It happens all the time. There have been studies on that, but they're outdated as far as I know. Yeah, so pro 2A, I'm going to assume, I, want, I will assume that you're a gun guy and that you're good with carrying a gun. Now, I don't want to make light of that situation at all. Heck, 50 minutes will be an hour, but it's, it's really important that you think about the importance of carrying a gun. It's not to be taken lightly. I have videos on this. Concealed carry protocol posted, I think, in 2008, like a decade ago. Nothing has changed. My philosophy is still there. You need to think about it. It's okay not to carry. So 
if you don't want to carry a gun, you'll still find a lot of good, good stuff, I think, in this video. Some advice and recommendations for you, and you can just kind of, you know, bypass the gun stuff if you want. But most of us watching this video, commenting below the video, we carry. We carry. And we like it. It's part of our EDC. Now, again, you may live in a state, a locality where it's a problem for you to carry a gun. I'm sorry, bro. I know. I talk to people in California all the time. I'm out there all the time. I know how it goes. Let's get going, dudes. Number 10. Biggest mistakes guys make in their EDC system. And I freaking love this because I've gear checked guys and I go, hey, where's your flashlight? Big mistake is they say, I use my phone as a flashlight. No, dude. That is a fail. Big fail. You don't use your phone as a flashlight. Yeah, but it's there. The light's pretty bright. Here's the deal. Murphy's Law. How many times have you really needed to make a phone call and your phone's dead? Oh, yeah, that's happened a lot. Okay, roger that. And do you know how much power your light saps from your battery? A lot. As a joke, I would get my friend's phones. I still do this. If they set their phone down, they have an iPhone. I, sw I swipe up on their light and I turn it on and then I put the phone down on the table. They don't know this. So they're, they're sitting there and they pick it up and the light's on and their battery's like almost depleted. They're like, man, how did that come on? I was like, dude, you need a software upgrade. There's something weird going on with your phone. And they still didn't figure out it was me. And then they'll go away and then I swipe their phone up or their light up again. And I do that like twice and their phone's dead. Okay, and also you're assuming that your battery on your phone is in great condition. I bet you a lot, if not most people watching this video, your battery on your iPhone or, or your Android or whatever is weak and you're complaining about it, how it doesn't keep a charge, how it dies all the time. And now you're depending on that for lighting functions? See where I'm going? Big mistake, dude. Don't do it. It can be a plan B to your major light. Awesome. That's fine. And there's another downside is it really is an area light. Even when your phone light is working, it's really designed as a flash for photography. You know this, right? That's what it's designed for. So it's an area light. It's gonna flood an area. And in that respect, it works pretty good. But it's not designed to cast a beam 30 yards out there in, I don't know, a pond where a mom and three kids just plunged underneath the water. Remember about the, the sheepdog concept and you pull over on the road and you're looking to be the rescuer. You look to your left, you look to your right, and there ain't no one out there except you. And now you're going to use your phone to see if they made it out of the vehicle before you decide you go into that pond to go save their lives. Told you, we're going to have a good time, but we're going to get serious. And you want your phone to be the searchlight. Come on, dude. What am I carrying? Still S20, dude. That can cast a beam. It functions as an area light, functions as easily a 25 yard light in its highest mode. It's awesome. A lot of great lights. I don't mean to just sell this one, but it's what I've been using forever, dude. I don't use my phone. Not as a primary lighting source. You know, that happens out there and you show it on the water and like no one comes up. Maybe you decide to go in, go save some lives that night. Yeah, sheepdog in action, saving lives because he's prepared. He didn't depend on his phone to light up the night. And if you do, even if you did say, oh, you know, I understand all that, but I'm still not carrying a flashlight. I don't want the extra weight. I'm going to rely on my phone. Then I say you better carry an extra battery to your phone. Granted, you won't have a search capability at all, but you'll have a battery to compensate for that rapid discharge of your phone battery. But then you, here you go again with SAWC. You're, now you're carrying a battery. You might as well just carry a light. That's number 10. Number nine, I gear check guys all the time. And again, this is my philosophy. They have no multi-tool. No multi-tool. They don't even have a pocket knife. Usually, if I gear check them and they have an MT with them, this is what they have. They'll have a squirt. And actually in the gear checks, I have counted that. Is that focusing? The, the squirt is something. It does have some utility. I reviewed it like a decade ago. Sorry if that's not focusing. But it, it's, it's very small and it's small in capabilities. Uh, it does have some things. 
it's a multi-tool, but dude, uh, the, the most important feature of a multi-tool set, in my opinion, are the pliers. And be able to apply force to something, cut wire, cut something like a nail if you have to. You better upgrade to something more meaningful. Here's my one of my S2 juices. This is Hall of Fame multi-tool. It's an MDMT medium duty multi-tool. It's so amazing. This is the old style that has the aluminum scales that I love, 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 love. I don't like the newer style so much. But if you really want to go Hall of Fame, dude, get like a charge or a wave. So this has even more capabilities. It has scissors, has a mini saw on it, has a deployable clip blade, has driver bits on it. I mean, that is amazing. I read somewhere online that, hey, if you ask anybody who has a multi-tool, you'll find a high percentage of those people have never used it. What? <laughs> what? I question the manhood of that guy who said that. It's like, that's not me. I use my multi-tool, I wouldn't say every day, but frequently. The scissors, the pliers, the wire cutters. Uh, if I have a, a multi-tool that has an awl on it, I use that. The drivers, uh, it depends on how I'll use the driver. Sometimes it's my pocket knife and sometimes it's my multi-tool. Which by the way, is a very interesting discussion. So, guy will say, well, I don't have a multi-tool uh, but I have a pocket knife. And that's a philosophical difference because maybe he's put some thought into it and goes, well, I don't need pliers. And remember, I said that everybody's uh, system is different. You apply it you know, to yourself. I'm totally good with that. That's okay. Uh, you don't have the capabilities of this for sure, but here's one of my cadets, for instance. And we did a TMP cadet model years ago. Oh, this is one of them, dudes. Check it out. Oh, no, it isn't. This is one of our carries and we just had it laser engraved as well. So this is what it looked like. And then this is actually a carry one. You see how it's, I'm sorry, this isn't focusing. Focus camera, focus, focus, focus. Anyways, it should say something like TMP carry. And this is that beautiful orange color. Orange is one of my favorite colors. I just love it for EDC items. It's awesome. So maybe he has this. He goes, well, I have a cadet. Mm, I probably still will not count it as a multi-tool because it doesn't have all the functions, but it has a lot. I mean, you have driver uh, capabilities, albeit 2D. I use these every day. So if I'm not using my multi-tool, which sometimes I am, I'm using my cadet. This one, that one. I use a freaking nail file as a Phillips driver. I use the knife all the time because sometimes that just fits the, the task better than the other blades that I'm carrying. Yeah, I think having a pair of scissors on you in your multi-tool is, is huge. In my multi-tool reviews, I always play up on the fact if or not a multi-tool has scissors. There's so many tasks that I find in my life, you may be different, that I need these. Skizzers. I love them. It doesn't mean I'll totally hate a multi-tool that doesn't have them. Switch plier right here. But it doesn't mean I love it either, and it doesn't mean I'll carry it. I'll never carry this one. Sorry, it's cool, but it doesn't have the functions that I need. No multi-tool. So you should carry a multi-tool, and now we're going to integrate that theme that I've always talked about of SAWC. If you're new to the project, welcome, by the way. Subscribe, join Patreon, support the work. Links below. There, put the plug in. But SAWC means size and weight constraints where you have a handle on the importance of the size of an item and the weight of an item. I don't run around carrying a charge or a wave in my daily rule of law carry. I don't. It's just a little bit too heavy for me. If you do, and you do it with high, high percentage, I say double thumbs up. I don't meet anyone that does. Anyone. Let me back up to rules of the road for this video too, and I should have said this at the outset, is on body carry and i think i have a talking point about that yeah we will i'm going to say that here because a lot of guys go well i carry a really hdmt and it's really awesome but it's over there in my bag we'll touch on that again sorry i jumped the gun on that i get excited sometimes when it comes to edc focus focus okay i feel so much better now <laughs> carry a freaking multi-tool dudes it's easy you know i would much prefer you carry this rather than nothing but for just a couple more ounces, you can upgrade to a juice. Carry it. You'll save the day, man.
There might be a staple or a nail that has to be pulled out. And again, everything isn't life-saving on EDC. I kind of made that example in flashlights, but it's more practical and you can still save the day. And this little S2 juice has saved the day so many times. Hey, does anybody have a pair of pliers? Does anybody have a wire cutter? Does anyone have some scissors? And I'm like, dun, dun, dun. don't break it, dude. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> don't break it. All right, enough of that. Carry a multi-tool, make it fit your system, and it has to be on body to count, not off body. That does not count. Number eight, biggest mistake guys make in EDC. And I don't understand this, but they don't have a watch. You did pretty good. RMR, so what? A lot of them say, you know what they say. Hey, I got my phone. I don't need a watch. Again, it's... Um, it's depending on a system, it's depending on a cell network that may or may not be working, especially if things go south. It's depending on that battery again, we had a discussion about that too. All that is true. Can you usually get the time off your watch? Yeah, it does work. But you're kind of going back to the 1800s in the pocket watch days, right? You remember the time before wrist watches? They would have their vest and they'd pull out the, they put their monocle on, they go, let's see what time it is. And they pull out their freaking pocket watch and they go, oh, it's half past seven. That's where we are now with our watches. Well, let me get, what time is it? I don't know. Let me fish my, my phone out. Oh, it's half past seven. Come on now. Practically speaking, it's dumb. But there's another reason that I'm going to advocate that you carry a watch. And it's getting back to my introduction. The reason you are into EDC, the reason that you, watching this video, like this stuff is because it is fun for you. We call that in the project second cool. There's first cool, practicality, how it functions and roll. Second cool is how does it make you feel? Do you like it? And by you electing not to carry a watch, you're missing out huge in the enjoyment of being a gentleman in the modern era, says me. My watch right now is a deep blue Master 1000 in matte gray. And it makes me happy. It's an automatic Seiko movement, sapphire crystal. Again, we're not focusing too well right there. Oh my gosh, is that a cool watch? Ceramic bezel. Waterproof, I think, to 300 meters on that. It's just awesome. Makes me happy. And there's so many watches. You are, in, by the way, I'm a convert to the watch thing. A convert. You know how much heat I caught in the Nut and Fancy Project for having a dorky watch? I used to do reviews with a calculator watch. Yes, a simple Casio did reviews. I didn't like watches. I thought they were dumb. I'm being dead serious with you dudes. And guys in the comments go, nothing fancy, you need to come up to speed with your watches. And I was like, ah, whatever. Blew it off. And the people who converted me were my two sons. Tactical Doodle and Last Suspect said, dude, your watches suck. Try this one. And I started wearing them. And little by little, I converted. I was like, these are kind of fun. It's, it's kind of like, and I've said this in my watch reviews, it's kind of like women are into shoes. Some are. Most are. They like changing their shoes out. Why? You know, as a guy, we look like, well, you got five pairs of shoes. Why, why do you need more? And she'll go, well, I like how it makes me feel. I like how it goes with this outfit. I like that it fits this occasion perfectly. We're like that with watches. And if you're, you're not doing it, dude, you are so missing out. Here is a Casio smartwatch. It's an Edifice EQB 800. Look at this thing. It is gorgeous and it syncs up automatically with your freaking cell phone. And yet it has that gorgeous analog presentation, solid link, stainless steel bracelet. I love the face of this one. It's so cool. Come on, camera. Dude, it's cool. Here's a $25 infantry with an aftermarket leather strap, 24 millimeter strap. It looks like a Bell & Ross. It's a Bell & Ross homage. I reviewed this. And when I'm wearing this, guys will come up and go, man, that's a sweet Bell and Ross. I'm like, that's eh, actually an homage. Makes me happy, though. Here's another Master 1000 in orange. Look at that sick band. I could do this all day. But when I'm doing my EDC, here's a Master 1000, my favorite dive watch ever, by the way. Tactical black with an OD strap. Look at how sick that is. You put that on, you feel like you're a Navy SEAL getting ready to do a Halo op. Hmm. You're like bailing out at 20,000 feet on oxygen. 
it makes us feel, I don't know, cool, I guess. And so if you choose not to wear a watch, you're missing out on all that. And you don't have to spend a lot of money. A lot of guys are like, well, you need to spend a thousand dollars or you're not a real urologist. Like, well, that's not me. All my reviews are like, not all, but most of them are $300 or under. Most of them are like 150 bucks under. So that's a lot of value, a lot of fun, a lot of second cool for you in your EDC system if you wear a watch. So part of my EDC check is like, what watch you got, dude? And then we'll start talking. Hey, I hate watches. Okay, gotcha. You might notice, by the way, that I'm wearing two. Well, I'm wearing an iWatch. And I'll say it right here, dude. The iWatch is not a watch. It's a wrist computer. You know, every time I need the time on this, it's on some other screen. Weather, messaging, timer, some other thing, and I'm tapping it. It's great for messages. It's great for tracking fitness. It does tell time, more or less. It has no soul, though. Hey, I'm not going to wear two. Why not? You're wearing a Leatherman tread on the other wrist. That's like eight ounces. Not eight, six and a half, whatever it is. Guys are wearing paracord bracelets, huge metal bracelets on it. Why not just wear something functional? And then, on, and this covers all the technology, right? You covered all the technology, messaging, fitness tracking, timing functions, Siri, whatever. And then you can wear whatever you want on the other wrist. You know, go pure analog, something that's just old school. Maybe a pilot watch, maybe a vintage watch, maybe a dive watch. You got both bases covered. Whew. All right, enough of the watch stuff. I love it. Number seven, biggest mistake that guys make in their EDC system. And oh my gosh, this is a huge pet peeve of mine. You guys have dull blades. What the heck? What the heck? Why don't you sharpen your blades? I would say 98% of the time when I gear check whoever, their blade comes out, whatever blade it is, and it's got the factory edge on it and it's usually worn with some exceptions. The exceptions would be the blade is so new that they have no wear on it, which is okay. Maybe they're just starting it in the rotation, but when it's worn, it's like dull. And you know what I'm going to say? <laughs> yes, I'm going to make fun of you. I'm going to say, come on, man. Is it really that hard to maintain your EDC tools? Do you not change the oil in your car either? I just don't get it. I mean, I use an Edge Pro Apex, and every time I mention that system, someone's trying to turn me on to something better. Hey, man, you ought to try what I have. Well, it may or may not be awesome. I'm not saying it ain't, but I'm just saying what I've used has worked for me, dudes. Let me see if I have one that has an edge on it, if this freaking camera can focus. Here comes a pair of military, dudes, and it's got tape on it, because what do you know? It was well, one of my notes. It was being used. What's with this freaking camera? Come on, dudes. There we go. That'll show you. Anyways, you, you might see the edge. It's super sharp. Shiny. Oh, that makes me happy. Seeing the edge like that. Oh, you're still here. Um, but carry a sharp knife. Now, we'll get into the first cool aspect of that. It's more functional. It's safer. You don't have to apply much pressure to make the cut. A dull blade, you've heard it ever since, whenever, as a kid, is an unsafe blade. you got to put a lot more pressure on it. Next thing you know, it slips and it cuts somebody. That's true, by the way. A sharp blade is a safer blade. Yes, you have to handle it with more care, but it's less cutting force you need, and it's the way to do it. I All my blades are sharp. I don't mess around, man. Now, sometimes a factory edge is so excellent, I don't change it. I mean, let's see what I have here on the table to illustrate this. Here's a cold steel counterpoint. Okay, and I wouldn't say I EDC this all the time, maybe once in a while. I think I've reviewed this. Maybe I haven't. I need to. But the factory edge is really good. I think this is OS 8A. Uh, you know, I'm not going to, like, take it to the, to the sharpener just because I have nothing better to do in life. In fact, quite the opposite. I, most of my heavy cardboard, or as I call it, industrial cutting, is with this, the Sheffield. So I'm using a carbide blade on that. And so I'm using this, and I, I've shown this in multiple knife reviews, telling you this is how you should work. So this, this by the way, is always on me. This is always on me. So, uh, like today, I've probably used this as I do every day about seven times. I just met a TMP or at Sportsman's Warehouse. He works at Sportsman's Warehouse. Shout out to Chad, by the way. Uh, hopefully, you watch this video. 
And I said, what are you cutting that cardboard with? And he brought out this wimpy box cutter. And I'm like, please, bro. Please. Have you been watching the videos? I was like, this thing is like six bucks. And he's like, oh, man, that's cool. And I was like, just take it. I just gave it to him. So he was all excited. He's like, man, it's like a folding knife. It's like cool, really cool. I'm like, nerd out on it, bro. It's awesome. It's going to make your job here so much funner. I just said, hey, go get some carbide blades and change them out. But this you don't have to worry. It's always going to be sharp as long as you have a new blade in it. If you don't have this or utility cutter, as I call it, of whatever sort, then guess what? You're going to be sharpening your knives and sharpen them. Don't, don't have a, a dull knife, man. Oh my gosh, I see it all the time. Um, yeah, knife mistakes. I could talk a lot more on knife mistakes. Another one, let me, I'm going to take a little side road here, okay? You guys love it when I go on rants. Guys, sometimes when we talk about SAWC, they adopt blades that are too big. So they, they think they're like, oh man, I'm going to carry this big blade. Let me see if I have one on the table. I don't really, because all mine are SAWC compliant. But whatever, they get a big folding knife, and next thing you know, they're leaving it at home. And that is, again, thematic through all these mistakes. That they thought it was a good system for them, it's not. It's not. There's a ton of knife mistakes. Also, maybe carrying only a tactical blade. That is a knife mistake, in my opinion. That you go, well... And here's a good example. And this is a great knife. I love it. The Microtech SOCOM. I love this blade. It's a little bit dirty. And it's my tactical emergency defensive carry, right? Not every day, but it's in the rotation. Uh, S35, I think, on this. The production date is 212. But I'm not going to use this as an EDC knife because of my approach to what I think are much more common utility tasks. And so my approach is a multi-layered, multi-knife approach. So this is my tactical blade. <laughs> I know this might be a little bit over the top, but it really isn't that much more weight. I have a cadet always. I always have a cadet with me. Tactical blade, pocket knife, not utility knife. And then I have my EGC blade. I'm laughing because it's so funny. The guys don't get it. They're like, oh my gosh, how many knives do you have? Given uh, on a normal day, if you count that utility cutter, I don't know, six, but they're all lightweight. They're SAWC compliant. So here's a Delica in VG10. So this this is a perfect EDC carry. In fact, I know it wasn't my EDC today. My EDC, my big knife was actually a Lightning. So I'm not a knife snob. It's like, oh, I need to carry a Microtech. I need to carry a Sabenza to be cool. I don't give a crap about being cool, obviously. Uh, <laughs> with that intro for sure um but it makes me happy and it's super fun i mean freaking lightnings are just fun focusing on the otf oh yeah um so that's a great edc system right there three knives but a lot of guys will just go with one big tactical blade and then they need to do some detail work like getting a splinter out of a finger they don't have a utility knife they don't have a pocket knife it to me is not super great now let me say this, and this is pro for the gear checks that I've done on you guys. A lot of guys have passed with flying colors. They have come out and they've been watching the videos. They've been listening to what I've been advocating all these years. <coughs> Excuse me. And they do have a multi-knife approach. They'll have a pocket knife, they'll have an EDC knife, and they have a tactical blade. A lot of guys have passed with flying colors and I'm very congratulatory to them on camera. And usually in the title of that video, when I gear check them, I was like, TMP or passes with flying colors. So there are guys doing it. They do listen. Um, but enough said. Dull blades and all that other stuff. We'll just call it knife mistakes. Number six reason. Where are we at? 34 minutes? Eh, maybe 50 minutes. About right. Probably over, I think. Okay. And this is another pet peeve of mine. I will try not to rant to you. Adopting what is cool or popular online. And it is not necessarily right for you. That is a big mistake guys make. They'll go to a forum. They'll participate in a thread. And in order to be cool, they adopt this system. They adopt this knife. They adopt this gun. They adopt this carry system. And lo and behold, it doesn't work for them. But they read all that stuff. And guys were saying, hey, this is how you do it. This is cool. And lo and behold, it doesn't work for them. Yeah, it does not work for them. I say, use what works for you. It will take some trial and error, for sure. It will. But I would be very wary of the purity, I'll just say the purity of information that you get online. 
because there's a lot of people that are, I call it TPA, it's third party advertising. You're watching a reviewer, maybe a blogger, and they're not really reviewing. They got the stuff for free, they're getting money on the side, and they're pushing a product. And yet you're watching this video, you're reading the blog, and you think it's pure information. They're like, oh, this multi tool is great, it's big, it's heavy, it's nine ounces. And lo and behold, you don't know they're on the take for that. It's TPA, bro third-party advertising it's not pure that I don't do that here you know sometimes I irritate people with my truthfulness but so be it it stands the test of time obviously obviously it stands the test of time but don't adopt what is just cool or popular oftentimes when I see a trend in the EDC realm I, I just kind of laugh at it I go oh my gosh yeah count me out on that big knives huge flashlights and going, by the way, this is another thing, going over the top in EDC, over the top. In other words, that they feel like that it is actually without rule of law and they're gearing up for a war. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't do that. It's rule of law, dude. You, I'm going to talk about the gun stuff here in a second. But don't go overboard in what you carry. For instance, and I hope I didn't make this another, another talking point. I didn't. But be realistic. So I've met civilians who have multi-layered guns on them, and I'm, I'm thinking that's a little bit overboard. You know, I'm like, well, I carry a Glock 19, and I carry an ankle carry Glock 26. I'm like, dude, that's too much. You're not a police officer. Your chances of being in a gunfight are next to nothing, thank heavens. And you're carrying around a lot of weight for no other reason. Now, if he throws a second cool flag out, he's like, yes, yes, and I have met a guy who did this. He goes, yes, I know, it is ridiculous, but it makes me happy. Then I go, okay. I'm not criticizing that then. We all do things in the second cool realm. Another guy will look at and go, why are you doing that? That's stupid. Why do you carry a multi, why do you carry a full-size multi-tool? Where'd it go? You don't need that much multi-tool with you. It makes me happy, dude. I used it on my other job. I've grown attached to it. It has a lot of wear and tear on it. It makes me happy. Okay. No said. No said. So, plot your own course. Pick and choose information from trusted sources and then adapt your system accordingly to your needs. There you go. No said. Number five. Biggest mistake guys make in their EDC system. And this is funny. And it seems like a minor thing, but it really isn't. They don't have a writing instrument. They have nothing to write with. Yeah, so what do I carry? I carry a Sharpie all the time. All the time. And you know how I carry it. Wah, wah. I can't believe you still stick with that system. Dude, I'm going to dominate you in a gear check. You know I will. Then I have some usually stolen Bic pin. Just something simple. Done. I got some writing instruments. There's so many people I have. Hey, man, do you have a pen? I'm like... What are you going to do? Pull your phone out of your pocket to check the time next? Lo and behold, he does. Hey, what do you know? It's half past seven. <laughs> Carry a pen, dude. It's not that hard to do. And you can actually enlarge that. And people have done this. They can actually get a writing instrument that has a defensive purpose. Cold Steel makes some. And there's other ones that are like defensive pens. I don't do that. I don't feel the need because I have other layered weapons for self-defense if I need it. But you can. Even a Sharpie could work, though like a Kubaton or something. Carry a freaking writing instrument. Oh, and I'm going to dovetail on that. Carry a singling device. Yeah, how many of you guys in your carry system have a way to signal? Let's go back to the cell phone. Well, I got my cell phone. Are the towers going to be working? You know, maybe, maybe not. Is your battery going to be working? Maybe, maybe not. Is your cell phone going to get lost or broken? Probably. Remember Murphy's Law descends on all of us at the least opportune moments. So prepare accordingly. What do I have? Well, you know what I have, dude. I've shown it on camera so many times. I'm digging into my man pack, which I love. And I don't care if online doesn't like it. Don't give a crap. It's awesome. Well, I got my freaking right, wait, <laughs> wait, wait whistle. <laughs> I got my whistle, dude. Of course. This thing is loud, too. It's like a dog training whistle so it has a P in it those are the best it's a singling device so let's say you go over a cliff in a vehicle and you're pinned and you can't yell 
How are you going to co contact someone? Let's say your phone either died or was thrown from the vehicle. How are you going to contact someone? You're going to yell? How long is that going to last? Your voice, is it going to last forever? No. By the way, this is established in fact, this scenario I'm throwing out. People who have had this happen to them and no one knew they were down in that gully off that cliff if they'd had a whistle blown three times over and over and over again, someone would have heard it. Signaling device. And then what do I have? I have that mini mirror in here too. Should just dump this out, dude. It's in here somewhere. In here somewhere. I don't know if I'm gonna waste time digging it out though. Oh, there it is right there. So it's a mini signaling mirror wrapped in electrical tape so it doesn't get all scratched up. It's polycarbonate, it floats. It's awesome. That's awesome. So here's my, when I say signaling device, I'm not talking about something cosmic. I'm not talking about like a GPS locator or a, a spot messenger. I'm talking about something like this. How many of you guys have this in your DC system? Very few. In fact, I don't think I've ever gear checked, maybe, but I can't remember if I've ever gear checked someone that had that capability in their DC system. <sighs> Moving on. Okay, oh, I love this one. Number four, biggest mistake guys make in their EDC system. And you are not going to see this one coming, dudes. You're not going to see it. I'm going to blindside you with this one. The other ones you may say, oh, yeah, none fancy. We've been watching your videos. We kind of know you're going to say this. Kinda, oh, yeah? Do you know I'm going to say that your footwear sucks? Huh. You didn't see that coming, did you? Wear good shoes. How many times have an EDC or, or gear check someone and they got flip-flops on? Why do you need good shoes? Well, the obvious reason is comfort. So I, these are Skechers, and I'm not advocating that these are the best shoes in the world. They're just good tennis shoes. EVA foam soles. They're comfortable. I like them. I like the coloration on them. You know, I like that FDE. It's cool. I didn't get them for that, but they're good. They got good insoles. Comfort. Comfort leads to more stamina. You're not fatigued, but the real reason you want to have good shoes on is so you can run. Message received. You need to be able to run. And you ain't going to be doing it no flip-flops. You need to be able to sprint because your life may depend on it. Other people's lives may depend on you getting from point A to point B quickly. And when those flip-flops start flying off your feet, or your, low, your penny loafers, you'll be going, huh, I kind of overlooked that in my EDC preparations. I looked good. You know, I was stylistic, but I didn't get it, dude. Get some good shoes on. You need to be able to run. And along with that, you should keep yourself physically fit enough, barring injury. There's some guys just have injuries and they, they can't overcome it. And I feel sorry for you. And I've had my own knee problems lately. I mean, big. So I feel you, brother. But the rest of y'all, if you can stay in shape enough to run, stay in shape enough to run. You should be able to run a mile. You know that video I made. Can you run a mile in full tactical gear? Now, I'm not saying you have to do that, but you should be able to run a mile. Run. Maybe, you know, someone's fallen in a well and your cell phone battery's dead. <laughs> you got to go get help. I'm joking around, but I'm serious. Wear good shoes. Doesn't cost a lot either. You can get a great pair of tennis shoes, just rule of law, around town, running your errands for 50 bucks. I think that's what I spent on those. It was relatively inexpensive. Wear good shoes. You need to be ready to run. Ooh, I like that. Caught you by surprise, didn't I? Number three. Am I holding that? One, two, three. Yeah, number three. <laughs> Biggest mistake guys make in their EDC. Okay, we're gonna go back to the gun issue. Oh, you know I'm gonna say this. You know I'm gonna say it. You're gonna say no gun. No, I kinda of hit that already. What I'm gonna say, I, mean, I, I do believe that carrying no gun is a huge faux pas in EDC. What I'm gonna say is they're undergunned. What do I see when I gear check guys? Almost without exception. Now, most of them have been in the state of Utah because, I mean, I go to California motorcycle, do adventures out there, and you know, concealed carry is not ubiquitous over in California. So I, if a guy doesn't have a gun in California, I don't ding him for it because that is state law. They're just abiding the law. Roger that. But in Utah, I see guys pulling out 380s. 
I see a lot of 380s. Now, for sure I offend someone watching this video who, guess what, they carry a 380. Hey, but 380s are a lot more effective than they used to be. Their loads are good, um, they're good guns, and I make sure I have it on me. I get you, brother. I really do. And if you tell me, hey, I've tried, and remember I said adapt your system to yourself. I I'm sticking with that. And if guy says, hey, I've tried a bigger handgun, and I leave it at home. Okay, it's a get out of jail free card. I'll let you pass on that. But for the rest of y'all, dude, for just a couple more ounces, you can upgrade to a freaking, this is my carry system, and it was all day today. It's in a Galco Classic Lite, a Glock 43, bro. Oh, by the way, I put these on there. How awesome are these? So I just got these clips from like Walmart with some elastic, and I'll clip it to my belt, and it pulls that gun down and shoulder carry, and so it's not flopping around, and more importantly, so it's not that visible. So under even this shirt that I'm wearing right here, this Columbia, thumbs up, dude. It works great. Oh, anyways, I'm nerding out on the elastic mod. Uh, Glock 43. I mean, just for a few ounces more. Now I have, this is a hot gun coming out of system, obviously. Now I have a full power nine, dude. Get up to SIG P365. And yes, I still like that gun too. Get any number of subcompact nine millimeters and be ready. Not saying 380s are horrible. They're not horrible. But I just think it's not enough gun. 9mm is generally my bottom rung for power when I carry. And if you load 9mm right, it's awesome. You go 115 plus P, 124 plus P. That's a, that's a serious round given the size and weight of the bullet launching platform. Yeah, 380s. I've seen 25s come out. I've seen 22 Magnums, North American Arms come out. If you're going to carry a backup gun, if you're an off-duty officer, thumbs up for me for those choices. That, to me, makes more sense. So we get a layered approach. So maybe you have a Glock 9 as your primary carry. You have a Glock 380 as a backup gun, as an off-duty officer. I get you. That's good. If I go into without rule of law, remember what I said at the outset, I'm carrying a backup piece. We're in without rule of law. Now the propensity of unfortunate violent activity is higher. Now my EDC system changes. What I'm talking about here is rule of law. But when I go without rule of law, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna be carrying this all the time, but oh, I got some velocities written there. That's cool from the chrono. Uh, this is actually my reviewing vest. So this is uh, when I'm out in the desert shooting, this is what I'm wearing all the time. So this is actually in desert. EDC. So I've got my G17. I got a Peacemaker 1 here. Oh, what do you know? Got a multi tool. Dedicated multi tool. That's a freaking jet juice. What is that? CS4? Yeah. Got that. Cool. Oh, staple remover. Stuff that I need. And then a great carry rig. This is a Phalanx. Still one of my all time faves. I don't need body armor in rule of law, right? So it's no body armor. It's just easy to put on, easy to take off. Has pockets for all the different weapon systems I'm testing. My point being, we morph into something more serious, more layered, especially with guns when we go to with, without rule of law. But so many guys, even in rule of law, are undergunned. There's a thousand comments right there. Under this video, the comments are just going to go bum, 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 bum. I, I anticipate over the life of this video, 10,000 comments. Be cool. Be cool. Otherwise, we'll have to do something to manage them if guys are going off and soapboxing. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, another thing. Undergunning, and I'm just going to call these gun mistakes, they don't carry a spare magazine. So out comes the subcompact 9mm, maybe. Maybe it's a shield. I gear checked one guy and he had a shield. I was like, rock on, man. Where's your spare mag? I don't have one. Oh, come on, man. You know your round's limited with that thing, right? Round's limited. Here I go with the off, you know, the uh, offside carry. So I have my Glock 43 extra mag with... Uh, the actually the magazine follower extension so I carry an extra round in it oh speak of the devil 124 grain plus P dusty carry an extra magazine what do you need an extra magazine for well anybody who says that what do you need an extra magazine for doesn't get it doesn't get it because why are you carrying a gun why do you carry a gun well in case you know active shooter scenario gotcha um, okay gotcha but uh, wouldn't you need more rounds than that? 
How do you know what's going to happen in that scenario? Now, remember, let me back up and throw this out. I always say let law enforcement do their job. Get out of the way. Don't try to be John Wayne. Don't try to be a hero. I've always advocated that. But if it's a time critical active shooter situation, you do what you got to do. And now we see the wisdom of that. I've been saying that in TMP all along, but with all these active shooter scenarios that have been going down, we see civilians intervening and saving lives. And why? Because they have a carry system that works. Because they're carrying with high percentage and the day, here I go on a rant again, sorry. The day that kicks off, they got this. And more importantly, a big gun mistake is they're trained. They've practiced. Don't carry something if you don't practice. I don't expect you going out every week shooting. No. Once a month would be fantastic. But at least once a quarter. You should go out and put 100 rounds to your gun. Go to the range. Maybe 200 rounds. Get that muscle memory down. And very carefully dry fire at home. Practice, practice, practice. Because that muscle memory is what will save you. You've decided to carry a gun, train, be good with it, use enough gun, carry an extra magazine. These are all gun mistakes, by the way. And by the way, here's another gun mistake I see when I gear check, guys. They're using a bad holster system. Either it's not stable, it's not comfortable, and that leads to them leaving the gun at home. Or another gun mistake is they go with too much gun. Hey, I started carrying a 42 ounce steel 1911. Yeah, where is it? At the house. Dude, you left it at home. Yeah, but I know, but I carried it last week. Okay, that's a fail, dude. It's a total fail. Yeah, you, you got to carry your gun with high percentage. And so if you ever gear check me, I would say probably 99.7% I'll have my gun on me. It's not 100% because there's sometimes I don't have it or I choose not to have it. But it's pretty darn high. Pretty darn high. A lot of gun mistakes. Again, that might be a whole video, but I hit the big ones undergunned, no spare magazine, the gun's too big, they leave it at home, poor carry systems for the gun. We gotta press on. We're already past 50 minutes. What? He went over 50 minutes talking about EDC? Insanity. Insane. Number two, <laughs> poor carry systems. All right, so you guys tease me about my fanny pack, right? And I don't give a crap. So day in, day out, guess what I'm wearing? This. Day in, day out, who's dominating you in the gear preparedness arena? Me, because I carry this. It's slim, it's lightweight. Oh, by the way, check out this sick cell phone mod I did. I haven't shown you this. I actually sewed a loop on here, got these off Amazon, so my iPhone clips right in. Oh, oh, gear Nirvana, that's insane. And dude, this is like a, I think this is a Vibe, REI Vibe. I ah, forget the name of this pack. I reviewed it. Go look at my EDC video. But I got like hearing protection here in this pocket. Oh, that's sick. That's super sick. Oh my gosh, there's so much cool crap. In here. I'm not going to do a review on this because I've already done it. And there are there have been some upgrades. For instance, remember the singling device? I got this in here now, dudes. Look at that. It's like a mini attack alarm. You pull a pin and throw it at a, like a grenade and it goes off. It's loud. No, I'm not doing it here. It's loud. It runs on button cells, but it's something. Then I got my sick iPhone holder for watching videos at lunch, catching up with the news. Oh, excellent. Oh my gosh. It's cool. This is a system that works for me. That's the bottom line. It's a system that works for me. It may not work for you. Maybe your body style is such, hey, I can't wear a fa fanny pack. I look like a tourist. Gotcha. But your system ain't working when I gear check you because you're coming out with all these excuses and you don't have the capabilities I'm talking about. No MT. You have maybe a light, but you don't have hygiene items like Neosporin. And look at how slim this is. This is not a lot. This is not huge. And I see it time and time again. Choose a system that works for you. Maybe your system, for instance, would be a proper, proper, underscore, bold, italic pair of pants that does have the pockets you need. My big thing I don't like my pockets getting stuffed full of crap. That's another reason I don't like that. And also, as I change pants, I have to get all that stuff out and it has to migrate over to the new pair of pants. I don't like that. Me, it's like a Batman equipment belt. Click, click, done. Change pants, it's self-contained. And at a very minimum, I told you I had like six blades. I mean, I still have this. And look, I sewed this freaking sheath in here. Oh, what's this? 
Oh, freaking Almar Eagle. Super light. What, 2.4 ounces? So I always have a tactical blade. So let's say I ran out of the house and I'm just doing a quick errand. I was like, oh crap, I changed pants. And I got everything. I got a multi tool. I got a light in here. I got a knife. I got riding tools. I got singling. I'm set. I'm set. A lot of guys, when I check them, they go, well, I don't have it on me, but I do have this really cool bug out bag. Where is it? It's in my truck. Fail. What I say at the outset, it's got to be on body, dudes. It's got to be on body carry. If it's not on body carry, eh. yeah, but it's just right there. I can just go out into the park. No, that's my rules, dude. You know, your rules may be different. Okay, I get that. My rules are, if it's not on body, it's a fail. It's not with you. I don't care what the excuse is. Yeah, but I'm just right there, and it's right on my desk. Eh, fail. The reason I say that is because there are systems that can be on your body, and you haven't perfected your system. Perfect your system, bro. You know, it's not that hard. Get a good carry system that works. Off-body carry, um, no. And also, a lot of guys wear jeans. And because they like tight-fitting jeans, they're going for style, they got jeans and penny loafers on. Here we go. You knew, you knew penny loafers had to be integrated back into this discussion somewhere, right? Okay. And, but now they have tight-fitting jeans. They don't have a lot of room. I mean, so, yeah, I'd like to have multiple. I don't have room. So now they have to make some hard choices. What do I take? Well, I got room for one EDC blade, a very slim flashlight, my keys, and my phone. I'm done. Oh, and a 380 in the back, you know, back waistband. I see that a lot. That to me is a poor carry system. What you're doing is you're saying style is more important to me than preparation. Boom, I said it. I said it, boom. Style is more important to me than preparation. Hey, I look like a dork wearing a fanny pack. Okay, here's the deal, dude. When I wear it, no one knows I have it on. I have a slight gut anyhow. They're like, ah, oh, that guy looks kind of fat. Cool, I don't care. Got all my stuff. There you go. Choose a good system, man. And experiment. Maybe you'll, and I've talked to team peers and go, yeah, I tried the fanny pack thing, didn't work for me. I'm not cool. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to hard sell it here. I'm just wanting to throw it out for consideration. So you're freaking prepared. Uh, not a huge fanny pack, slender. But you can also do like uh, organizing pockets in a BDU thing. That's a great way to go. And again, like I said, you can do like 5'11 pants and they make some great pants. I just reviewed some last fall that are outstanding trim they don't look too tactical they don't look too officer uh officer like get those there's different ways to approach it but again remember it's got to be on body for it to count boom that's the number two biggest mistake and then we're ending the video right at about an hour check that out wow he did what <laughs> number one mistake that guys make in their edc and this is huge is they ignore the lessons of SAWC and they end up with nothing. Zilch. Maybe it goes back to that one talking point. They adopted what the forums thought were cool, of what other YouTubers thought was cool. And they tried it, they spent a lot of money on it. And then a couple weeks go by, they turn to months and they go, you know what, this isn't working for me, it's uncomfortable. It's digging into my kidney, this gun I'm carrying, this holster doesn't work, this knife is huge. I'm never using this huge knife. I'm not getting to some knife fight all the time. Why do I need a freaking fighting knife this long? But the forum said it was cool. The gun's too big, this freaking light is huge. They said I needed more battery power. Uh, you know, instead of some compact and more realistic, they start leaving it at home. They end up with zilch, zilch. They mean to get back and revisit their EDC system, but life is busy. We have bills, we have health problems, we have drama at work, we have a lot of TMP videos we have to fit into our schedule somehow. <laughs> There's a lot going on. So they just don't get around to it. So next thing you know, they're in Costco and they run into nothing fancy and he does a gear check. Oh, crap. Oh, hey, man, I like your videos. Gotta go. Wait, 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 wait. Gear check. Yeah, I don't got nothing. I was like, Why? Well, sometimes they're honest with me. Sometimes out come the excuses. But, dudes, don't ignore the lessons of SAWC. How do you come up to speed on it? Easy. Watch my reviews. It is thematic in the project. 
lightweight is critical in the Nut and Fancy project. It always has been. I've always been pushing for manufacturers to make lightweight things that are strong, fast, and effective in their application. A lot of them have made great strides. I mean, this Delica 4, case in point, freaking awesome. It will stand the test of time. They've never discontinued it. It continues to be a hot seller. It's one of the all-time best EDC knives you could ever have. Why would you not carry a knife when you have something like this? What is this, 2.8 ounces? Something ridiculous. It's so thin. Why? Watch my reviews. I talk about it with guns, too. Glock 43 review, P365 review, all my gun reviews, I talk about weight. On this PPQ review, I talked about how lightweight it is. It matches the weight of a Glock. And yet, it's a combat-worthy handgun. It's a GTW combat handgun. And by the way, I carry this. In wintertime, that sucker's in a shoulder holster. Delco. Not all the time, just sometimes. It's, you know, but when I'm wearing bulkier winter clothing, yeah, I will carry it. It's a second cool thing. I like it. I don't, I don't need all the rounds of this, but... I like it. Makes me happy. I'll carry a Glock 20 too, 10 mm, winter time. With two magazines, by the way. I've been gear checked with that. Hey, what gun's your gun today? I don't know. Guess. Glock 43. I'm like, nope. Keep going. Glock 17. Nope. Glock 20, 10 mm. What? Made me happy, bro. I like it. I love 10 millimeter. It's insane. Love it. Love it. Makes me happy. Yeah. Anyways, it may take you a lot of experimentation to find out what works for you, but don't ignore the lessons of SAWC. Lightweight, thin is critical for every item I've talked about, save perhaps watches. Okay, you know, actually, I, and this is where I kind of break ranks with my own philosophy. I'll, I'll wear this watch. What is this? I don't know, 3.2 ounces, I'm guessing. Not super light. I don't care. I like it. it makes me happy. I'm not going to go with like a 10 ounce watch, like an Invicta or something. Nah, not doing that. Now, be realistic. Be realistic and don't ignore the lessons of SAWC. Boom! One hour, three minutes. Oh my gosh, you got 13 bonus minutes out of this. The 10 biggest mistakes. 10 biggest mistakes dudes make in their EDC systems. I hope you like this video. I've had a great time making it. Yes, there's a lot more. But these, I think, are key to you having a good EDC system and being ready, being prepared and being able to serve in situations where you might need to serve. Having tools, having mental preparation, having practice, like with your weapon, key bro, it's key. Party on man, thanks for watching, thanks for being a Patreon member. This will post first as it always does. In Patreon, love you guys, see ya, nothing's out.